Next question, Alan from Danbury. Um, Vix had a 14 in front of it a week ago. Now is signaling 16 spot 08. All time highs aren't as high anymore. Is this something to watch or be weary of, or just summer volume playing a factor in your models? Appreciate you guys. Can't thank you enough. Yeah, I mean, since the number one thing I look at every day is the volatility volatility, you can bet your mate off that I'm, I'm looking at it. Is yeah. it something to pay attention to? Of course. I mean, it's a consolidation signal. So again, that's what it is. It's a really easy summary. It took me actually 10 years to say that, uh, even though I knew what to do with it on the page. So again, my challenge is to coach. You know, again, it's telling you that the upside in volatility isn't there. It's telling you that going to new cycle lows on volatility probably isn't there either. A lot of that most likely has to do with some volatility in the economic data associated with the variant or the variant narratives associated with the variant, you know, um, possibilities and probabilities that people talk about there. So, yeah, just deal with it. You know, tomorrow morning you could, uh, by Friday actually, you could, you could have the VIX signaling 14 again on the downside and 22 on the upside. I don't know. I actually don't really care. Okay. Steve from Houston, I get the yield curve flattening from the low end. What I don't understand is why if, if, if inflation is sticking, is the high end dropping? What drives that with sticky inflation? Well, Price two things, high. I mean, you got, um, that's an important question. I mean, the long end of the curve doesn't just go up because you have inflation. It's got, it goes up when you have real growth and inflation. Right. Quad two, you gotta have them both. When you're in quad three, the rate of change of growth is going down, not up, right? Stagflation's nasty. Go back to 1971, pull up a twos, tens chart, 1971. Ooh, looks just like today. Then by my birthday, January 5th, 1975. Just terrible, right? No yield curve, no earnings multiples, awful economy, terrible politics, and a guy in a sweater telling you that uh, whatever. Um, you know, I didn't know Jimmy Carter, but I know what the economy was that, that, that you ended up getting. Um, so again, if you look at this uh, for what it is, uh, A, you got the short end of the curve. B, you got the long end of the curve. So we'll just call this short-term rates, long-term rates. So again, short-term, that's where you get your upward pressure on inflation because the Fed has to constantly update and upgrade this ridiculous word that they're using called transitory because it's not. It's trending. Simple fix. Just do it. Now, all of you that have the Fed's ear, just tell them. Use the word trending, and then we'll just get it out of the way. So maybe the short, short end of the curve can get to the top end of the range. Maybe it gets to 0.25%. Maybe it goes to 0.50%. Imagine that. That would really flatten the curve. What happens along that way is that the market gets scared that the Fed's going to fuck up. Okay? Write that down. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, they're tightening into a slowdown. Because they are. Right? They're late to the party on inflation, and they're tightening into a real growth slowdown, which the long end of the curve is like, whoop, I'm going down. Because you already are slowing, let's just start with that, on a real basis, and now the fear is that the Fed makes you slow faster. So that's the whole kit and caboodle, I think, for now. It took me a little while to see that. Now, for all of you that are crystal ballers and you've seen it coming all the time, up and down, congratulations. I want you to be better than me. But I think I see this one pretty clearly now, and it's not as of today. Uh, this is clearly when we started making these quad three phase transition pivots, when I got out of things uh, that I was long of and went short of them, uh, and vice versa.